The last time we talked was 2011, I believe. And the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, we had our fourth child uh, as a, another boy. I've released two country records, and, um, and I just recently released my very first gospel project. It's been a wild ride. There, you know, it hasn't been just positive stuff. There's been some, you know, really tough, challenging things that I've been through. I started singing when I was probably four or five years old. And so I've, I've basically been singing my whole life. As I've gotten older, I've come to realize that I've been in a spiritual battle uh, ever since, especially ever since I've decided to, you know, pursue singing in my life. There's just a laundry list of things that I've had to endure from my neck up, everything from spinal stenosis to my vocal injury back in 1996. I've broken my jaw, I've chipped numerous teeth, gashed my chin open, I've had two broken noses, got hit in the head with a brick, I've had two concussions, the list goes on and on. And just recently, I've had sinus surgery. That's one of the many challenges that I've, I've had to kind of fight through in order to continue to do what I love to do. There might be something you love to do, whether it's singing or something completely unrelated. Sometimes you're just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to fight for it. You're gonna have to fight for you know, your job. You're gonna have to fight for your marriage. You're gonna have to fight for your home. You're gonna have to fight for your children or anything else in your life that has value. I think that's been the, the toughest struggle for me is that, you know, uh, I work hard towards a goal and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I just have to kind of commit that to, to prayer on a daily basis. A lot of times the success that we have in our mind is, is it, it kind of, once you actually achieve it, if you ever do achieve it, a lot of times it just leaves you flat and it, and it leaves you empty and it doesn't fill that void that you're trying to fill. And the only way you can fill that void is with Jesus, and, and I've learned that firsthand. You've heard people say whenever they take their first trip to Israel, they, they talk about how it's a life-changing trip. Being able to, to go over there and, and see these places with my own eyes, just thinking about how it related to me in my life today and how the Lord is, He's still living and He's still speaking to us. When I was standing uh, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and just thinking about you know, when he called the two disciples to, to throw down their nets and follow him, Jesus was standing there on the shore and they audibly heard his voice. And he called, he, he told them, hey, stop what you're doing. I'm calling you to something bigger and something better. And they did it. I started thinking about the time that he actually spoke to me about my future at that crossroads of like, do I stay here or do I chase this dream and do I make the sacrifice to move to Nashville? And so he spoke to me and basically said, I'll get you there. All you have to do is trust me. He called me spiritually to my future and to, to be a fisher of men. And so not only have I made country music, but I've said from the day I got my record deal that this is not just about me. I, I want to be able to have a platform to where I can make a positive impact in people's lives. When I was standing there on the Sea of Galilee, thinking like, I can relate to those disciples. They, they could have easily just stayed in that boat. They would have never reached the people that they reached. They never would have made the difference that they made of them. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about them today. And same with me, I could have easily just ignored what he said and tried to make it on my own or even just stay there in my hometown. Um, but I never would have reached the people that I've reached. God knew what potential I had. He knew that he had given me a talent and I was supposed to use it. And I chose to do that. I chose to use it instead of burying it or you know, just hanging on to it. I'm definitely very thankful for what I get to do. Each and every night, like I just, I wanna make sure that I'm not squandering my opportunity to no matter how rough my day was or how crappy I'm feeling. I want to make sure I go out there and put a smile on my face and and just let people know that, you know, God is good. If you want to find out how to live second, go to imsecond.com slash livesecond.